Ring. Come on. There, there we, we go. go. Nivia being it. banned out immediately by Curse NA. I mean, Curse, they got wrecked. Let's yeah, let's be honest let's, here. Yeah, so, um, yeah, it so wasn't be, yeah. one thing. It was the Karthus and the Indice who really punished them, but just sort of any good mid lane farmer, anyone who had scaled really well in late game could have been uh, just devastating. Right. Karthus, I'd say, is the premier example of it, but they know they roamed a bit too much. They did not pressure him enough. It's not the Karthus that necessarily shut them down. It may have just been the aggression from TPA. So... What does what does Curse and A do? They realize that they that TPA can beat them in their own game. Do they need to ramp up the aggression? Do they do some crazy ass pick or something? What do they do here? They could go crazy. I, I think they should go double assassin still, because double assassin is awesome as hell. But if they want to be a bit more stable, less um, well, maybe a strategy they might only work against North American teams. Oh, oh. But uh, if they want to go ahead and do something a bit more reliable, focus the ganks towards mid lane a bit more. They did have. Nocturne going Berserker Greaves. He didn't have the HP to really survive, and right. that was a big problem. So they need two things. One, maybe more aggression towards mid. If not the aggression towards mid, then someone who can at least tank mid every now and then. Because eventually, St. Vicious was just not relevant to team fights. Yep. And uh, TBA, oh, these, these are actually the same bands from Curse and A game number one, and almost the same bands from TBA game number one also. Uh, at least was the last one that they had uh, game one. They may stick with it, but man, Rengar was such a problem. That and might be their bet. There, there you go. There you go. Yeah. So TPA, they know they're going to allow Curse to have Elise, but they may also take it for themselves if Curse decides not to grab it here. Curse, historically, they may actually go with their support here first. They may pick up Zyra again. They may stick with that Nunu that they've had a little bit of success with. Lulu, also not seen this year, uh, this uh, series yet. And again, Lulu, the most played support this weekend so far. And I'll lead up has been seeing that much play within the past, like, eight hours or so. Has not been a lot of... Uh, Lulu played Diana, was not banned again. Diana was uh, interesting yep. there because she has a lot of good roaming potential. She can get to the fights, but that kind of fed into the whole, well, Karth is just going to be farming up mid lane. Right. Uh, there was a good roam towards bot lane early on in the game. He did force a good flash out of a uh, cop, but, well, they never followed up on it. They never had a chance to really punish him for using that flash in the lane. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of the story just across the board. Just not enough bot lane, not enough mid lane. Uh, maybe they need more stable lanes, maybe they need to pick Caitlyn right now. That might be their choice, actually. Maybe you go for 1v2, but they just cannot let the lane stand as it is. Yeah, Caitlyn, Caitlyn Nunu right here would just be perfect. Nunu it, it picked, worked, though. There you go. There you go. It worked so well for them, but actually securing the Olaf instead, still ambiguous, not sure he's going to jungle or into the top lane just yet, but that's what you need to do sometimes uh, in the picking process. Keep the enemy team guessing. I mean, hell, for all we know, this could be AP Nunu top with a mid lane Olaf, but That'd be hilarious. I can only dream. <laughs> this is a good pick, though, because they don't need to go for Kellen. That may not fit their style right. uh, on TPA. Well, if it's their style, but they may not want to go for it this game. But now they have the Nunu locked in. Now they have the control. They're saying, well, you guys can do your thing, but we have Nunu already. We have what we need. Jarvan being looked at, but NY Jackie a big troll, so probably not going to be Jarvan. I hope not. <laughs> I certainly hope not. Well, uh, we've, seen, we've seen Dragon work uh, coming out of Froggen, but it's a very situational pick. You have to know what you're doing, and yeah. this this could be a top Galio. If the, okay, yeah, Galio was a possibility, I believe. Um, CLG Prime Hotshot played that in the one v two lane. Yes, he top did. Lane. Yes, he did. He actually had a, a reasonable max success with it. I mean, they did win that game, so of course. <laughs> but uh, grabbing up the Mundo away from TPA at the very least, and also securing Vayne. Cop looking for huge damage, looking to be a hyper carry into that mid to late game. The Mundo may have not had the most obvious presence last game, but he was in the fights, he was definitely far forward, just kind yeah. of forcing uh, Curse NA on the retreat for a lot of situations, which meant Karthus, he was actually more of a backline character in a lot of cases, just because he would not die. And it's like, he would walk up, there'd be a Mundo, they have to focus down the Mundo first, but Karthus is killing everybody, it's bad, bad times coming out for Curse NA. Yeah. Uh, TPA, they're going for the Caitlyn, they're saying, alright, Vayne, we can shut down Vayne. Vayne Nunu, alright. Nunu, Caitlyn can obliterate a Vayne. Vayne just doesn't have the range. Vayne will eventually, and this is a big word, eventually, yeah. be able to go ahead and shut down Caitlyn. It's actually really funny to watch because Caitlyn just can't do anything and Vayne just tumbles and chases. <laughs> but uh, before that point, before, you know, maybe level 7 with some decent items and equal farm, very importantly, equal farm on uh, Vayne. Ooh. Oh, that's a big pick. But Ouch. until that happens, Caitlyn wins. And Caitlyn wins hard. That's, that's a TF. That is a twisted fate. And uh, if, if you're not aware of, uh, of the, the goings-on in most of the uh, China meta and the Southeast Asia meta, uh, Twisted Fate is still to date like one of the most banned champs 
uh, over into their solo queue, and for very good reason because of all that global presence and the team fight control, and just the, the, the ultimate is just so amazing. So it's a matter of what Curse can do. The Elise was still left open. That will be on Void Boy in top lane. And uh, the Sona support going to be going to Rux. And uh, if you uh, if you actually missed some of the uh, the interviews earlier on, uh, you may have noticed too that uh, Alstar is actually a champ that Rux will never... The, the team won't allow him to play Alstar. And that's actually like, the best you know pairing you can have with a Vayne. The team just won't let him have it. It's like, hey, you miss your combos too much. But at least they know their limits. But they can still get some decent poke that's, here doing so. That's actually good to hear. It's weird to hear... Well, it's weird to hear a team admit that. It's like, well, we can't run yeah. this because I'm not good enough at it. Like, it's hard to admit that. It's... A sign of humility, which uh, Curse and Hay, they, they've never really positioned themselves to look like that team, but, yeah. I mean... Well, or, or, or it could just be, you know, uh, an underhanded remark disguised as humility. <laughs> well, hey, hey. Admitting something. It, it's actually yeah. kind of nice. Like, the teams overall, it's definitely a transition from what we normally see in teams where being yes. just a bit more humble. They can see their mistakes more, and they get a, they've improved a lot because of that. Right. And I mean, NA, they came in as a, definitely underdogs, but CLG Prime make it all the way to the second or semifinals of winners. And Curse and A, they beat out their, their brother team, Curse EU. And that's that's a big feat. Curse EU is really strong, had some great performances recently, and that's that's a great sign for Curse and A. Last pick considered, though, for Taipei Assassins is going to be, be that Skarner. Skarner. So Olaf will be decided to be in the top lane, and uh, Skarner does a lot of team fight control, and that could be brutal. If you get that impale onto Vayne, onto Sona, or even onto Elise, just getting that onto Elise could actually be huge, because Elise is known for that great escape, just pop up off the map. You know, I have to go now. My people need me, but that will ensure staying still and grab that kill. So what's going to be big is the single target CC coming out of TPA. If you look at their AOE CC, when it comes to hard CC, they don't have any. They have snap traps. Right. They have gold cards, they have impale. They can actually combo a snap trap into the gold card or the impale, which is very important to remember because usually the the root of that CC is just not important to most teams. Right. But because of that, Caitlyn can be relatively safe. If Diana dives aggressively, they can punish her. If Cop is ever out of position, gold card to the face, impale pulls you back, you're on a snap trap, you got to use cleanse at some point, but you can't cleanse the impale, and you're dead, by the way, Cop. So got to yeah. be cautious. Uh, Curse, they do have Diana with her pull, which is a great AoE CC. Rux playing Sona has a crescendo, one of the best CCs in the game. And it's going to be a t uh, like two different comps going on. TPA is going to be focusing on just kind of getting one person out of place while Stanley dives in being super aggressive. And Curse, they want the AOA CC uh, to somehow protect Cop against Stanley. This could be a farm thing. This could be just Void Boy diving in, distracting him. It's going to be a weird team where Curse plays aggressively but has to defend Cop, and TPA just wants to go all out in the offense and just lock one person down. Now, uh, I've um, sometimes when we see a heavy push lane like Nunu Caitlyn, uh, sometimes you will actually see the lane swap come into effect. And remember, uh, right now, TPA, they are on the purple side. And if they were to do a lane swap, Olaf would actually be in close quarters to that blue buff. So that, that I'm not even sure how well Elise actually does in a 2v1, but you think that it might actually be a possibility here? I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, Stanley actually take a level 1 blue buff and Skyrim just to take yeah. red buff and just go ahead and organize everything so that TPA can just have the perfect lanes. New to Caitlyn, it's a great push lane. It's also great at punishing main. I don't know if they want to just let the CS happen. Mm. So they might just go for a 2v2 bot lane. And Stanley, if he feels... I think he feels like he can win a 1v1 versus Elise. Elise doesn't have uh, the highest HP, and a lot of her mitigation, or a lot of her survivability comes from mitigation mm. rather than um, HP, because you get extra armor and magic with this while you're in spider form, I believe. Yeah, take a look at the ultimate too. Yeah, just a little bit. A little bit. Just, just, just a enough. tiny bit, but still, that makes you a little bit more powerful. And that's going to be Shining just useless door. against uh, Olaf. The Undertow will, will be affected, of course, but those Reckless Swings, they're still going to stay Reckless. They're still going to hurt like hell. <laughs> <laughs> Toys, uh, just, he, he just wants to look at the gold card just for a second. But uh, I was actually uh, talking with Baron like a few weeks ago that there's like a trick you can do with those cards, too. Like, you can just double tap real quick and that's like an instant gold card if it's on cue. Alright, well he here's uh, the T or the Twisted Fate fun fact of the day. Unless it's oh uh, oof, Rux. Oh, did they get the ward? They got oh, the ward! Oh, hey, nice. they got it. That's an important ward because now Curse and A, they're in the dark. Unfortunate. Absolutely well, unfortunate. So back to our fun fact of the day. Oh yeah, fun fact of the day. Those cards are always taken for Twisted Fate. That's why uh, when you hit pick a card, it's never where you last left it off. It always ticks in the background. So if you can kind of keep that count in your head, obviously doing it the entire game can be incredibly difficult, but let's say you use it and keep it in your head after you've just used it recently, you're no you know when the gold card is going to be up. You can get instant gold cards if you just kind of time it in your head. Oh. 
Interesting. It's, see, and that's the thing. You're it's still it's learning something. Really hard to do. It's incredibly difficult. But let's but face this it. is toys. It's toys we're talking about it's here. Like toys. I, I know Messiah can do it for sure. Toys, of course. I think he can do it for sure yeah. too. It's one of those like I want to say of course, but <laughs> well, I don't know. Uh, Jackie, yeah. by the way, running teleport. Going to be there to try try and counter any sort of uh, aggression coming out from toys when he does go to a different lane. Depending on what TPA does, if Low Balls holds the mid lane and is level six, he can try and interrupt it himself. Stanley, if he does go towards the mid lane, can try and kill uh, Jackie if he goes for the teleport, but that's going to be a good uh, counter for Twisted Fate. And go aggressive, try and just chase him down. It's You see him come out, well, Diana's a little bit uh, better in those early fights, just as a bit more damage, a bit tankier. Yeah. And of course, that pull is so good. So good, and which, again, if, uh, if you catch him, can also interrupt the ultimate also. Yeah, so. very, and you can usually kill him if that happens. Twisted Fate, yeah. it's like once you've caught up to him, it, and if his gold card is not up, or even if it is up sometimes, it's kind of like his hat just kind of shakes, he's looking really scared, his boots, you, you, you can tell the quivering. Yep. And it's just not a good place to be as Twisted Fate. So the lane swap will actually happen here for TPA, but uh, Stanley unfortunately will not be getting that blue buff, so he's just going to eat it out. Boy, boy, caught going back into the top lane. Exhaust going down, flash, All those flash, flashes. flash, triple flash. Boy, boy, will not be living off this one. One more auto attack, first oh, blood. Oh, boy, boy. Boy, boy, that cupcake, too strong. Just had to walk. Uh, that and was that was a quick. That was a that nice was trap. Very quick. Very fast. Uh, can you look at Voiba? I want to see what he got at level one for his skills. Uh, it's, what did he get? He actually he got, got the Q first. Yeah. He got the Q before he could really use it, and that's that's one reason he couldn't survive. Could not get to the turret. Go ahead, use the uh, the defensive maneuver in oh, spider man. form, and it's just the W was not up. That's just, that sucks, but uh, you know he's getting punished. He should not have gone through that bush. It is a dangerous bush. Should have seen the two v one coming in. And did and not play it safe enough. And just on that, just now nearly on farm and the oh. one kill. Do you know who got blue buff? Who got blue buff? Boy, boy. So oh, Caitlyn now has unlimited damn. build over peacemakers, lower cooldown traps. That's a huge, huge problem. They're gonna try and dive him now. That sucks so much. Saint Vicious actually nearly going down to the red lizard. And little balls like, you know what? A, a pre five minute turret is pretty good. I'm going to stay up here. I'm going to camp out this lane. I'm going to help ensure that this tur turret goes down and goes down quick. This may actually go down before five, maybe even before four. Just they, they want that turret down. And the moment it does, there's going to be a 2k lead. They're going to back up, yeah. There's a 2k, 2K lead, lead at the four minute mark. At the four minute mark for Taipei Assassin. Can I get this, this four minute turret down? And one of the big problems Caitlyn has. <laughs> Is Pilgrim Peacemaker has a decent cooldown, but more importantly, her mana is a huge, huge problem. But guess what? No matter. No matter, but she has blue buff. Boy, boy, gave the blue buff. And I really got surprised by those flashes, but when they saw the blue buff on him, it's too when, they, when he didn't try to escape already, they knew something was up. They, they had a force set. Oh, and, uh, man. I mean, that turret, is it going to go down? What level is Boy Boy? It's still level 2, just from the blue buff, I believe. Maybe a little bit of minion He had to experience. go back to get wolves, just to stay needs, on top of things. That's, he needs uh, a lot of help, and St. Vicious can't provide enough. They can't 2v2 up there. The turret will be going down. 1.7k gold lead, a 4 minute, 26 second turret. I mean, TP, they are looking <laughs> dominant. <laughs> and Stanley, I, I, I assure you, he's probably not going to be down here in bot lane for very much longer. Uh, you're going to see a recall from maybe a mistake pretty soon, probably. Go down into bot lane. And look, how much damage has that bot turret taken? Not, not much. much. About 500. You know, that, that's an okay amount given the time of the game. It's not yeah. an incredibly fast push, but not a slow push either. But uh, that top turret's gone. And looking at Nunu Caitlyn on the minimap, where are they headed? Down towards that bot turret. Going to relieve Stanley. Yeah. And that is not a situation you want to be in. And even with the pressure in the 2v1, Stanley still actually has double the level. On to Boy Boy right now, Stanley 4, Boy Boy 2. Even that, it's like you look at the gold, is a huge advantage there, too. It's, well, it's, and that's, that's the worst possible right. start. What TPA did that was really awesome was they had Gunner show up. He sacrificed a lot of his own jungle just to sit there and deny experience. Oh, Cop gets hit by the slow. They could try and chase this down. The tumble from Vayne trying to get away. Condemned back, forcing out the flash from Cop. The net swinging Bebe a little bit closer. The auto attacks will be enough. Throwing down the cleanse, but the pacemaker, the Q. They lock Bebe, it down. more than enough to help secure that. 2.3k gold lead, five and a half minutes in TPA. They are this, just looking dominant. These are the current world champions. And there's you, a reason they got and it. If there's a reason, if there's a reason why they got that we're seeing it right now. All this aggression, all these fantastic plays. And baby doesn't care. He's he's bringing down. They're just gonna take down that bot turret now. They can go ahead, <laughs> they can play this game incredibly quickly. Just get they have a, a gold advantage across the board just because of the turret going down top. Now the Caitlyn Nunu combination, the Caitlyn Nunu combination that was so dominant without kills last game. Right. Now they're 2-0-0. Now they have global gold from those turrets, they can try and punish Vayne. 
And this is just what level is Vayne? At least level four. At least they're equal right. experience. But now Void Boy's kind of useless. Stanley has the experience lead on him. Can very, kill him very easily. And Void Boy just needs to get something. Yeah, he's. I mean, he's 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 freezing the lane, so he's at least doing he's that. Gonna, yeah, he will he will be in an right. okay situation, but he's right. still. But it's it's gonna <laughs> build up eventually. And Stanley will get a lot of CS and can try and chase him down. And, uh, and also to put to put things in perspective, also remember kills are worth about twenty creeps worth of uh, gold and experience. So effectively, Baby has doubled up cop. Well, don't forget, there's like an extra 4 CS coming out because of uh, Twisted Fate's passive. And Dragon! And they can do this for free. They, they know <laughs> that Elise is nowhere nearby. And this is kind of the advantage. Stanley can roam. He can go ahead and go other places. This is what you, what you do when you get early turret down top lane. You go somewhere else, you apply the pressure, and there you go. 3,000 gold lead now at the 7 minute mark. That, <laughs> is, is, that is insane. And then a pink ward to go ahead and take out this green ward. I, it's... it's I mean, it's a curse. They're alive, but they're not in a good spot. Normally, you expect toys playing Twisted Fate to be making all the ganks happen, right. but it's it's happened so quickly. And really, his job is not so much to win the lanes, which you yeah. usually do with Twisted Fate. His job is to keep them shut down. He's not there to make a big play happen. He's there to just casually show up, say, you're right. already behind, stay behind. Exactly. Sit. <laughs> and we may actually see him come into play here. His little toys level 7 with the ultimate. Once the wave pushes up a little bit more, if they recognize that uh, someone like Rux, who's somewhat low and decides to stay behind, right behind with the gold card, can smack that up. But there's little balls passing on over to the blue buff, over to Toys, so he's going to be significantly happier there. And the wave continues to push down here in bot lane. This tower's going down, and there's nothing Curse can do about it. It might but survive it might sur because TPA is dying CS. TPA chooses. To let it live. Yeah, they it choose you to let it live, tower, but to get the bigger advantage as Cop yeah. is just <laughs> dancing in the corner. Let's, let's get some Cop vision. Let's get some Cop vision going on. Oh, Come on, Cop. Cop. Can yeah. you do anything? Ba you, once Cop, once you have Baby's permission, then you can die. That's pretty maybe, much. Maybe maybe when he hits level six, <laughs> maybe. maybe he can go ahead and make a big play, try and do something. But that bot turret <laughs> does go down. Now TPA is just going to roam mid. This is a four thousand gold lead at the eight minute mark. Every minute's been a thousand. We're so gold lead for yeah, five, five, yeah. four minutes. We're 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 right now. We're at the the five hundred gold a minute mark, and the lead just continues to expand ever further. And just by just by watching Cop and his uh, dance of frustration down there. Curse that it may actually already be writing this game I, off. I mean, I this would, is demoralizing. I would not be surprised if emotionally they're just shut down right now. The score right. is only 0-2, but they've lost two turrets. They've lost a dragon. Right. I mean, now the mid turret's being pushed. TPA, they're just putting aggression all over the map. I mean, Twisted Fate is winning mid lane by 30 CS. Top lane's equal, but Stanley has a bit of an experience lead, and that Olaf is very intimidating and has global goal to back him up. Yep. And now that the top and bot tier ones are gone, might as well push mid. Nijek trying his best. That for some rats. Uh, uh, but Toys with that gold card keeping Hijacky under wraps. Bebe with the net also. Every single creep wave that's huge, but there is the teleport up here. Top lane flash. Gonna be grabbing Void Blade, followed up by the Impale. Looking for the swing, but there is a teleport. Hijacky wants to make his presence known that that is Lil Ball is actually going down here in top. Rux not too far behind, but look, there's Bebe. There is Mistake also. We're making their way here top, but they realize, hey, the Fight's creeps over. are still pushing. Yeah, take out the turret. Take Might out the as turret. Well. They can't do anything up there. I mean, Low Balls went a bit too aggressive. Did get taken out. They didn't actually have the damage to take out Boy Boy. So that was a good play on his part. He stayed alive. He Did he uh, actually use his W to escape? I didn't see it, but even if he didn't, he just yeah. tried to bait it out. He knew that they were going to go for him. And once he got that impale, he was more or less guaranteed to either trade or survive. And still possibly get a kill. So great play coming out from Curse. He at least got something. It's a 4,000 gold lead, but the truth is, this is not over yet. This is not That's a good true. situation. This is not a good situation. Yeah, it's it's not least. ideal. It's not ideal. It's very demoralizing, but it is, again, not you can over. Recover. And this is this is really what separates the big teams from the little teams, is that how well do you play under this kind of duress? I mean, and, yeah. TPA earlier today, they were down, what, like 1-9 to nine against SGS? They still came back. Exactly. They, they came back strong, took that first game, took a second game very clearly. I, first, yeah. They can do the same. I remember because we were watching that match, too. It was like, oh, well, the we were about to cast, so we, we were about to stop. cast. It's just like, well, all right, but, this wait, is over. Like, really? This is cool. It's SGS winning games. Like, whoa, TPA turns out they're amazing. Yeah. And that is something Curse to contend with. TPA is amazing, but <laughs> well, Saint Vicious, at least now, level 7, has a bit more CS than Lil Balls. Lil Balls is kind of falling behind in the jungle. Uh, Actually, the same level as Rux, really having fallen behind the game overall. The big scares are going to be toys in that mid lane at 101 CS, a little 15 ahead of Jackie, and of course, Bebe with that two kill lead. And of course, don't forget the global gold. The global gold making a big impact this game. Absolutely. So it's, it's, it's five, it's three turrets and the dragon and all the extra farm gold and first blood and everything. That's, that's, that's really where everything came from.
Dragon should actually be coming up uh, in a little bit. Actually, not too far away. Probably about another minute or so. So we'll see if a TP actually decides to uh, make their way down. There's another teleport coming in from Toys. Straight from middle lane. Boy Boy cannot escape down. Throws himself up into the air. But has to come back down eventually right into the tail end of the absolute zero. A little bit of a mistiming. And just trying to waste as much time as possible. Unfortunately, the ward coming out for yeah. first. I mean, you cannot have good ward coverage versus a Twisted Fate. And very importantly, TPA, they chased him out. They were pushing him in. And TF, like, when you actually retreat in your own lane, TF gets closer to you. Yes. Uh, because of how the angles work out. And that they, they chased him into a TF hole. They chased him to a more dangerous position, despite the fact that he was going towards his own base. So great play coming out from TPA. Boy, boy. I mean, he just doesn't have options. Of course, when yeah. you do use that, you can't target where you land unless it's on an enemy. And if you're going to land on an enemy, if you're going to land on someone who can kill you, it's, right. there's not much you can really do there. <laughs> I got to say, though, uh, Cop, and, and, uh, you know, despite the situation, is actually doing the right thing. He's sticking around bot, and he's staying farmed. Because you remember, this is Vayne we're talking about. Uh, you know, a hyper carry like Vayne, once you itemize correctly, once you get the zeal and start itemizing those huge items, that true damage still does great against the team like what TPA has. If they can stick this out for a good like 15 minutes, allow Vayne to farm up, itemize properly, this we can now transition uh, for Kirsten to do a protect the Vayne style comp. That could be it. Like they wanted to go aggressive in the first place. Don't think it's gonna be able to work out. But I mean, Kirsten, they're not out of this yet. We keep saying this, but the fact. The fact that they have a pink ward and a green ward by their blue buffs, just trying to keep control of the map. The fact that Saint Vicious is clearing wards with Oracles, they're still in this game. They're still relevant. Yep. They're still trying. Oracles is huge. They yeah. have not given up hope yet. It's, it's it, a lot of teams could in this case. A lot of teams would actually, right. but Curse they're sticking in this, and they know what they have to do. They have to well, kind of let Boy Boy go. He's he's dead. He's gonna fall behind. If they keep killing him, that's okay because they're yeah. not shutting down Vayne. They're not shutting down Jackie. Boy Boy, the way he scales, well, his Q it's based off percentages. So his damage isn't really going to get that much higher or lower. And if they can just go ahead, like, sacrifice and be an okay trade, but Dragon now being attacked, will be going to free for TPA. Yeah. Well, Jackie gets a really good press strike. I doubt nope. Yeah, they're not going to get there in time. TPA once again getting another Dragon for free, bringing the gold lead up to uh, a little bit over 6k. Toys has the gold card rummed in range just in case anyone came down to try ramp, but there is a ward that will be cleared. St. Vicious, that, that Oracles is the best thing he's bought in all day. And, I mean, but unfortunately, the game, though, Little Balls just bought his own. He has his own. St. Fish is actually a level ahead of Little Balls. I mean, this is a very, very tight game, to say the least, for Curse NA. Uh, if they can go ahead and not lose the Oracles and just wait and keep waiting and maybe catch TPA when they go for an aggressive play. If they see TPA try and do something, then they can play aggressive. Then they can punish mistakes. But they, they have to wait. They cannot get anxious. They cannot let nerves hit them. They just have to be patient. They have to be calm. Right. And eventually, as this game goes on, that 7,000 or 6.5k gold lead will mean less and less. Unless maybe they'll close the gap. Right. Though it's, it's actually going to be really hard to do that because of Toys' passive. That's actually a nice little advantage TPA has there. Normally in passive games, um, it's nice to be TF because you just get extra farm yeah. as the game goes on. You get a little bit more ahead. Um, or yeah, a lot of people. It's gonna be bad actually. A lot of people get a lot more ahead. A lot of people forget about that. And oh, I, I forgot it adds a little. Uh, I forgot it actually adds the gold. Uh, yeah, it tells hurt, how much she hustled. So two seventy eight on Twisted Fate, huh. uh, one ninety two on Stanley. How much on uh, Bebe actually? I, I, I'm, I'm curious. Two sixty. So a decent amount right there. It's still something. And every every basically across the entire team. It's, an, it's, it's another. It's It's like another turret that got taken down. Twisted right. passive is incredibly powerful. People really do underestimate it. Mistake and off on the side. Curse and A bravely going into their own jungle, clearing time for Saint Vicious to take out the ward over by their own blue buff. Cop, like I said before, he's doing the right thing. He's been uh, farming down bot, but this is the problem that he cannot rejoin with the rest of his team in a reasonable manner. Stanley actually going the long way down through South Jungle behind the tier two and mid. Looking for uh, look, looking for a little bit of interference from the rest of Curse NA. Now is a full five push, a full five defend from both teams. Uh, but Lilbo's deciding to deviate from the plan, and uh, Stanley actually going back down bot to make sure that that wave continues to push. Mistake taking a little bit low in that uh, poke war, but well, he could die, and it's not gonna be a huge deal for TPA. They want him to be the main focus of the team fight, mm -hmm. and well. TPA, they're still respecting Curse. They're still taking this cautiously, not trying to make any bold moves, not trying to go too dangerously into a fight because even though they have a 7,000 gold lead, Boy Boy is still out front trying to apply pressure. They do know they're ahead, that's for sure, but they don't know how far ahead they are. They don't have our nice little uh, UI setup. Yeah, we don't have a, we, they don't have a god vision like we do, unfortunately. 
So they might just be be going ahead, waiting this out, trying to see their, their easy opportunity to take this game. They've been taking Dragon, the second respawns. They're, of course, pressuring every lane they possibly can. And they're just trying to build small advantages, maybe waiting for a big item. Twisted Fate, for example, just went from a Lich Bane to having a Lich Bane, Sword Shoes, Chain Vest, Amplifing Tome, as well as Boots and Ward, or Wards and Potions. This could be a little bad for Little Balls. Ping's actually going down. Uh, Little Balls may actually be trekking, but he oh, finds Rox here. Though. Stanley's right oh, here. Rough. side. There is the slow on Rox. There's the impale. Plenty of damage on to the Soda. TF Old goes up just in case. Oh, Ping on the vein, though. Where's he going? Down bot. He still manages to get the gold card off on Cop using the cleanse just to get away. Flash will bring Cop to safety, but that was both summoners burnt on Cop just from a simple TF Ultimate. And unfortunately for Cop, he cannot use Tumble and his ultimate to get away. Right. And Stealth, of course, does nothing with Switch Fate's ultimate onto him. And this is this is kind of what they have going for them. They look for those easy catches. They have not been making big plays because they don't have to. Now they're ahead 8,000 gold. Now they're pushing in bot. Now Cop doesn't have an escape. Rux still has ultimate up, but I mean, they got an easy kill. Sam Vicious, what are you doing? Off on the side. Don't lose that Oracles. That would be disastrous. That is no, disastrous. that. That is bad. That, that is that not a good deal. situation to be in. That could be it because now TP they can ward everything of Curse. Curse and 8, if they're trying to enter their own jungle, they'll be spotted. Enter the, just leave their base, yep. they're going to be spotted. Once those wards come out from TP, they know they can't afford another Oracles. This is, that's actually going to be devastating. And another, another turret going down. St. Vicious trying to go for the flank, yep. but it was going to be a 2v4 or 2v3 yeah. at best. St. Vicious does not have the gold to buy another Oracles. He actually decided to spend it on a Null Magic Mantle. He needs to stay in these fights, at the very least, if a team fight is going to be happening in the next few minutes. And Rox doesn't actually have the gold to do so either. And those are the only really two logical choices uh, for well, Oracles here at The Kirsten problem a. is, I mean, Rux could never clear uh, a creep wave on it or clear yeah. a warrior. Uh, the second he does, Toys presses are kills him. Unless he's with his entire team, which, you know, that's what you normally do for Baron, but they're going to need more than just Baron wards cleared out. They yeah. need. Someone like St. Vicious who can roam, who uh, if they do get into sheet on, buy toys, can just get on out of there. So, and now, now, so, so now, where can Curse actually leave their base? The, can, they, can they leave the safety of their towers at all? Well, not really because they're being pushed in. They have to be there to defend St. Vicious actually using Smite and Jets to kill Creep. Look at the angles at the on base. Oh, they're exhausting him. They oh, got the exhaust. Oh, nice. oh, sniping him down. <laughs> Holy crap. Rux still giving chase, gets the crescendo down on to the Nunu. There's the Jacob with the pull. Finally, Voiboy coming on up with that one. Quick little snipe. Those spider wings helping out massive. There's also the Q from Nijack. He gets the vision onto Stanley over onto the side. But uh, Voiboy could not stick around here for very long. Toys, the ultimate, is actually back up. Could go beyond tier two over in top. Just waiting for the little eyes to see if they go for this dive. A lot of damage coming out from uh, Boy Boy under both uh, Beba and Stanley. That Null Turret will be going down. TF, one of the best pushers in the game, of course, with that Lich Bane makes it a lot scarier. Oh, yeah, and it does amazing for taking down objectives, too. Yeah, Blue Card, of course, does incredible tower damage, the highest, I think, of any ability in the game in terms of just quick burst. And just, I mean, that that was just unfortunate. I want, well, I want to say this Rux got three shot. By yes. Beba. Lucky them. Yes. Lucky them coming out from toys. Lucky them. <laughs> Lucky them it wasn't four. Yeah. He has the gold card. He has the sun available. I mean, they just, they're in a situation where everybody has to die on TPA. Stanley, uh, he has a phage, and now the force of nature, incredibly hard to kill. Oh my god. But under Toe Spam, that, those axes deal incredibly high amounts of damage. Bebet, he's got Infinity Edge, Durker's Greaves. How much gold does he have in his inventory, actually? He hasn't bought in a while. Oh. <laughs> oh, the, uh, it's only 2,500. He's going to kill Dragon, possibly, and get a Phantom Dancer. He's going to have Immediately. Infinity Edge, Phantom Dancer at the 20 minute mark. Oh. It's, I mean, it's, it's a wonder yeah, just to have, right like, your, your ideal goal is to have one of those before the 20-minute yeah, mark. Yeah, maybe, maybe the 15-minute mark you want to get it, but even then, yeah. that's, that's still really good. <laughs> this is both by the 20-minute mark. I didn't oh, have some cash God. there, actually. You can buy a red potion and go ahead and run with that, be a little bit tankier. So it's like, Bebe has to die. Uh, Toys, he's Twisted Fate, has a Lich Bane, has a lot of gold, uh, is already really close to his own, so he has to die, too. And everybody has to die. On TP, everybody is a major threat, even Skarner, just because, well, he's hard to kill and he's very uh, mobile ooh. and his Q does a lot of damage. But Phantom Dancer and, and the Zeke's. Zeke's. Oh my god. How, that how, is. How, how, how much, how much, uh, not not even near Nunu, right? Just wait. There we go. Well, 1.6. 1.6 1. 6, 1. 6, 6, isn't wait, on him. There's the blood boil. How much was it? Two. Two, two auto attacks per second. Realize, <laughs> okay. Rux got three shot by Bebe. <sighs> so it takes one and a half seconds for Bebe to kill Rux right now. Yeah, it's it's. See, I'm I'm glad you're good at math, man, because I it's 
Math is great. Yeah, math is pretty fun because you can say, well, <laughs> crap, Curse is not in a good spot right now. Very confidently. <laughs> but there you go. Now we actually have the statistics to <laughs> put it onto the side. But it might actually be less because only one of those attacks were crits, and now his crit chances increased because of the Phantom Dancer. Oh, my God. But, but that's, let's not go down that road that's too okay, far. Let's, let's, but, uh, let's just say that Rux <laughs> cannot be near uh, that. And that's the true of Olive Curse. Even uh, St. Vicious who has two Doran Shield, there's no one with... A lot of armor. Oh, there God. is a glacial shot, but there is no frozen heart. There is no randuins. There is not even like no Thor mill. They just do not have the armor <laughs> to survive Babbit. Neither the HP. Yeah. The, the, when when you're in a position where you're considering Thorn mill, Thor mill <laughs> would actually be okay <laughs> just because it's so much armor so fast. Right. And like that's that's the scary part. Like they they might need that much armor that quickly. The game. Yeah. It's very close to being over for them. And there there are so there are few few extremely few instances where you would ever consider buying a Thor mail. All right. This may very well be one of them. King Ward is in the pit. It doesn't spot the Green Ward. Lobos will go in there. They have the Oracles. Now they get it. Now they get it. I and mean, there's the new old pile on Baron more damage. Have uh, Baron's down at about half and cursed that he knows. This is their Can only steal. chance of fighting. Can team. they actually get the steal on the two? He gets it! They get the Baron steal, but the matter of the fact is, can curse and they still live? It does not appear to be. Nine Jackie, the only here cop, not even with the fight. All four members of curse that were present completely melted. Bebe, the only one going down. Even Bebe might be in danger. I believe Toys does sell his ultimate enough if he'll be feeling very, very manly, trying to go for that. Doesn't have a lot of HP himself. And. They get the Baron buff at least. That's a decent amount of gold that TPA didn't pick up. It comes out about equal because yeah. a lot of members of Curse are on death sprees. But it's now actually just no, no one was. Only <laughs> two or two or two or two. But it's still a matter of what, how are you going to make up the the remaining 13k deficit here if at Cop the 23 can minute mark? Kills, hasn't died. Cop using the cleanse in a struggle just to live. Stanley actually does go down to the pressure from the vein. Ultimate still up, but now down to stake. Can you live? Flashes over wall. Saint Vicious flash back in pursuit. The burning agony more than enough to take out the Nunu. That's a good start. Let's now let's now they let's, got something. Now let's they take, got cop with the Baron buff. Yep. Yeah, now let's take care of the other twelve thousand gold. They they have to do something. <laughs> that's a lot of gold they have to burn through. Maybe they can take mid. That's two deaths on TPA. Toys Perfect. gets the ultimate. Does get out. I mean, no interrupt on Mundo and Jackie wasn't quite there yet. <laughs> I actually teleported to a ward uh, just to get nearby. I believe. Yeah. Um, so they need to take objectives. Taking this turret, this is a big deal. They get a little bit of map control, they get that global gold, they're coming back. There you the go. Baron buff on Vayne, I mean, it's not the biggest deal. It's not going to make up for the fact that he doesn't have Infinity Edge, doesn't have the crit damage or the crit chance from it, but at least it's some raw damage. So it's a little bit more ump to try and make right. up for the fact that, well, frankly, he's behind. Yeah, at, at the very least, he also has the Phantom Dancer. He's gotten that first uh, major item he needs. And for someone like Vayne, you don't necessarily need a big damage item. You just need attack speed so you can get the extra procs over from the Silver Bolts, which actually have been maxed out. Yeah, normal builds uh, tend to be either a lot of points to Condemn or a lot of points to Silver Bolts. Uh, looking over at Cop, he is level 15, the highest level on Curse. Uh, Jackie's roamed quite a bit. Boy, boy, he's not had the, the best of times. Yeah. So, Cop, like, he's got his builds, and he does a lot of damage. That's the nice thing about Vayne. You don't need that much gold to really hurt just because of the true damage. You got quick catch over Baby over on the side. Nine Jackie is looking for a blood curse. Cop manages to get the kill onto a caught Caitlyn. Nine Jackie throwing down the zone just in case, but Little Balls wants to drag Diana somewhere, but not going to be going very far. Double kill. Cop actually cleaning up this fight. After the earlier catch on the Caitlyn mistake being slowed by the Cleavers coming from St. Vicious, the burn should be more than enough, but there's Toys on the side with the gold card to keep him behind. Nunu at the very least will be safe, but Stanley also way away from the fight. That is the second catch. That's the second catch. They're going to keep two. pressuring this. They might get another turret out of this. St. Vicious is fairly low, and maybe going to be up in about 10 seconds, but I mean, of course, they're playing this really well. Yes. In the end, okay, Bebe is scary. He's got Infinity Edge, Phantom Dancer, and Pick X right now, but that's all damage. That doesn't keep him alive. Right. The Vamp Scepter does, but if he's dying before he can do anything, if he's being CC'd by Condemn, being hit by the pull, can't escape, can't auto attack, can't do damage, then it's okay. Then it doesn't matter that he has that life steal. And all the DPS in the world is nothing if you don't have the survival or positioning or survivability to, to keep fighting. Right. So now, uh, now at this point, DPA realizes how much of a big force Cop still is. The entire team is actually not quite down and out yet. They recognize Vayne still has a reasonable amount of damage, and uh, they do need to keep grouped up. They cannot get caught out like that again. 
the next time that happens, it may very well actually be giving up a free Baron, but there's St. Vicious walking straight on into the brush. Boy, boy, keeping the little ball sun, and there's a the Crescenda coming down. Also, the nine Jackie will be melted. You got the new duel was also used, but St. Vicious trying to regen. Stanley running amok, but this time, Bay Bay is safe. You cannot get to the Caitlyn triple kill. That fish went up on the Sona. Finishing up Cop. That will be the ace in the quadra. And that should be it. Taipei Assassins, at the very least, are getting an inhibitor off of this ace. Just one more minion, but that's okay. Be brave. Bebe taking the mid tier three, taking the mid inhib. And they can continue to push on this. Curse and A, they, they had so many good catches, but they were still behind so much gold. Now right. 13k difference. And the problem was who did they hit that fight? Who got locked down? Sona Ultimate, who did it hit? Not Bebe, not Toys. That's what matters. Yeah. And they had the front line on TP8. They actually encountered it this time, not straight to Bebe in the background. And they got punished for it. They could not really keep fighting through that front line. They still didn't have the gold to get through that. And Bebe got his free auto attacks off in the back. Toys did a great zone use uh, Hourglass, that was not great. being hit by the ultimate from Sona. So that was a great play on his part. But because he didn't get hit, because he didn't get take any damage, he just kind of kept fighting it. He didn't die, I believe, but it didn't matter. Yeah. What kind of he did what he needed to. He did, he did his job. And he that's got a good stun, got some DPS, got a burst. And now 14k brought back up the lead for oh, TPA. Just, just, just look at Kaelin auto attack. That's a beautiful thing. Look at that. Oh, that. That Peacemaker is so slow. Damn, girl. It's actually a DPS loss for her to use Peacemaker it on is, one it's, single target. It's, it's, it's actually di you know, it's disadvantageous for Bebe to use anything besides an auto attack. That's, that's a problem that's Caitlyn does have. That's why she is not <laughs> right. considered someone who scales well in terms of skills. But it's his, it's gonna be rough, it's gonna be tough. Oh, uh, and they working have for, to for TPA's mistakes. Working for a second Phantom Dancer with in combination with the Blood Boil, that will be a maxed out attack speed, Caitlyn. That's huge, especially as we've just now mentioned for someone who's pretty much only exclusively gonna be auto attacking for the remainder of the game. It's a maxed out attack speed, Caitlyn. She's gonna be moving incredibly <laughs> fast through the game. Uh, curse, they, they might still be able to get this. She still doesn't have any survivability, but the mobility yep. might be enough to keep her alive. That might be how she survives. It's it's gonna be rough no matter what happens for Curse, uh, but still, they're still at least alive. The inhibitor going down, I say, is one of the major problems. Normally, that means one team can try and push that lane in, go to a different lane, and yep. wait for super minions to do something really, really mean to your base. But TPA, they're in this. They're ahead, they're dominating, but first, they can still come back. They can they still can. make their big play. The, the the hope is still alive. Toys, down bot lane, distracting Night Jackie, but remember, there is the teleport, there is the ultimate still available. It is level three, the range on it is pretty massive. So now the split push possibility is opened up for TPA. He can just stay down bot lane, keep the wave pushed. Hey, there's a team fight, there's a 4v4. Well, guess what? I'm keeping Diana busy and you can win that fight, no problem. 338 damage crit on Devoy Boy who has a frozen heart. That's a lot of DPS that's, from yeah. that's, that's a big number. Same Vicious might just die to Olaf in this case. St Stanley is a three level advantage, and here comes the Caitlyn ultimate, that is huge. One more Undertow, couldn't do it. No, no not quite. Not be able to land it, but that's an ult used by Mundo. Baby out in front, clearing the creep wave. There's some cupcakes for everyone to enjoy off on the side. Just. Leave time, make time for Baby to grab that tower. It is going down way too fast. That is going to be a naked in him now in the top lane to go along with the one that's already down in mid. Uh, they have to catch him, they have to burst him down quickly, and of course, Swiss Bay can always join the fight, actually backing off from Diana just to make sure he can Fair still enough. get there. And uh, Diana versus TF Botlin's a really rough fight for Jackie still, just because Toys has a Zonias. He can survive the burst from Diana. If Jackie makes one mistake, he dies in response. That's another naked inhibitor. That's another possible inhibitor going down, and that's probably game. Baron now respawned, though. TP heading right towards it. Curse, they're gonna try and fight it. Could go for the seal again, but it's gonna be rough no matter what. Uh, it's gonna go down before they even get there. I think Bebe is too ridiculous. There is the TF ult. Also, where is he going? Right out in front of the blue, but the great crescendo coming from Rux, but will it be enough? Stanley trying to give chase to Spiders, blocking away, but does finally catch up. There are the flashes. Vayne trying to do the best you can, cop over on the side, but Bebe with the pinch. You shall not leave, you shall not pass. The Sheriff is in town. That is an ace. TPA, five for one. That is going to be game. TPA looking good, looking confident, because guess what? They're going to be going up against CLG EU next. Yes. First NA, well, you know what? I mean, 
they're a team that they've had a lot of problems recently. They had a lot a swap actually with Rux coming onto the team, still performing right. admirably this tournament. They may have not won, they may already be going home, but they're still they still look strong. I'm still proud to say that, you know, they were a team in this tournament. They were here and they were good. Yes. But they were not great. They were not great like TPA was in this past match. How do you deal with that that <laughs> Caitlin Nunu? Both games just <laughs> dominated. Yeah, them. absolutely. And but with that, unfortunately now, one more North American team. Do one. you believe in CLG Prime? That's it. That's that's all there's left. They're currently in losers going to play the winner of Azubu Blaze and Moscow Five, which is a hell of a match, yeah. by the way. That's, wow, that's a match. So coming, so we'll, we will be seeing Taipei Assassins go up against CLG EU. That's going to be a massive match. CLG EU has is, is always historically been a fantastically strong team, but we see what TPA can do once they get those very early advantages. I mean, it, TPA, they played two very quick games. CLG EU, known for their long duration games. Can they, like, who's going to get the duration of the game right? And TPA, right. they may be the world champions, but they did not play CLG EU in that tournament. I don't right. know if they've had any experience with, with CLG EU in the past, actually. I don't believe so. So it's going to be a no, no, new they match. Did, no, they had, um, they had a show match oh. with them. Remember, yeah, the, uh, the, the, uh, the Taiwan Regionals, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so, and I think... I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure CLG actually won that. Yeah. So CLG, I, it's not a lot of history. It is show match. Right. People may have not taken those seriously. That is sometimes a concern. But CLG having a little bit more history in their favor. But of course, yeah. TPA, the world champions. But they, I mean, they got knocked down to losers. We looking or Fnatic looking super strong too. Yeah. But man, it's I do man. I feel I feel a little bit for Curse and A though. They had a great showing. I mean, both well, both of their teams. Curse it was or die. Curse or die. And uh, you know. Die. <laughs> and uh, I just I hope at the very least that. Uh, over the next few weeks, we don't see a uh, a bench void boy. <laughs> that's well, no, what see, see, you that's gave up blue buff. You are bench. They, they have elements <laughs> bench right now. They can go ahead and just get a few more members on the team. Bench make the new curse bench team. Right. And just just keep going from there. That's how I expand curse. Just keep right. benching players and new teams keep forming. Uh, we hope them all for the best. And uh, TPA and curse EU is going to be an amazing match. And. Uh, Oh, we got plenty more action. We're, we're nearing the end of day three. Tomorrow, we're going to have the conclusion of everything. It's, it's, it's so much. These are all. Every single one of these matches are just absolutely fantastic to sit down and watch. Pure it's, entertainment it's value across the board. Going against great teams. Like That's just what it comes down yep. to. It is good League of Legends players playing against good League of Legends players. And it's just that's awesome it. to watch. It's fantastic to watch. Thank you guys for watching. We'll be uh, back with a little bit more League of Legends action later on in the day. Once again, thank you to all of our fantastic sponsors and to all of you at home watching. It's a fantastic weekend. There will be more. We'll be back in just a little bit with some more great games. This is IPL 5.